The Raman spectrum is full of information, but in general it is pretty weak. But there are some tricks one can use to increase the Raman signal dramatically. These tricks are the topic of today's episode of Raman TV. When the laser hits the sample, only a small portion of this light is scattered, and an even smaller portion of that is the actual Raman signal. If the laser wavelength, however, is close to an absorption of the sample, this Raman effect gets amplified, sometimes even up to a million fold, for example with keratine and the 532 nanometer laser. But this resonance Raman technique always needs such a match between the laser wavelength on one hand and the molecule absorption on the other. A different approach amplifies the laser power. Now, not the 100 or so milliwatts that are typically used, which is already quite a lot. No, the laser power is amplified at the nanoscale, right where the molecules are. This is done with gold nanoparticles. When the laser hits these particles, they generate a local electric field right near their surface that can be up to a million times stronger than the actual laser itself. Now, if a molecule happens to be close to such a nanoparticle, it sees this enormous field and responds <laughs> with an enormous Raman signal. The difficulty with this surface enhanced Raman technique is to get the molecules really, really close to these tiny nanoparticles. One can, for example, just let a sample dry on a substrate with these particles, or let molecules bind to these particles in the solution, or bind the particles to DNA or antibodies, which in turn bind to the sample. Some methods even use magnetic nanoparticles to catch the molecules. With both of these techniques, resonance or surface enhanced Raman, one can detect even the tiniest traces of the sample. But Unfortunately, not for all compounds. It only works for some. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Raman TV.